Well, you don't know unless uh, unless it's your page or unless somebody else is telling. You know what I mean? When it's yours, you don't see that stuff for some reason. All right, it says we're live. Okay. And of course, it takes me five minutes to share to everything. Nope. There we are. Now I see us. I know you always see it before me. Like I'm on delay over here. You know why? I think it's because I go through the business app. I think I just need to go through regular Facebook. Oh, that's what I do. That's what through I'm, the, that's what I'm going to start doing. Through the business app? Yeah. I don't know what it's called. Like where business you, suite? Yeah, I think so. Perfect. Okay. I don't see it yet. Hi, everybody. Carrie's here. Hi, Carrie. Carrie. Hello. Welcome. I just want to be able to share it real quick. It's not popping up yet. No. Well, I, I see it here. Maybe I can share it from here. No. Maybe I just can't share it on my thing tonight. Personal page? Yeah. We'll share it. You can share it on there for me. Yeah. Thank you. Get by with a little help from my friends. There you go. Thank you. There it is. Perfect. So Sag season. Is that our topic tonight, Rena? I think so. <laughs> so we're going to start with, we never know like what direction it goes, but. All right. And if you're on here, talk to us guys. So we know. Yeah. Stop by, say, hey. Let us know what you want to talk about tonight. How does that sound? Say hi. <laughs> okay, cool. So Sag season. I mean, like, we're already like, aren't we like halfway through it already? I always yeah. have my ephemeris here to see where the planets are at it at any given moment. I'm I'm getting all my hard stuff done so that when I cruise into Capricorn season, it's not so stressful. That's what right. I've been doing. Website updates like every day because <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. And I feel like when I do one thing on my page, then everything gets moved all weird and I got to rearrange everything. Ugh. You're good. Because like I have to have GoDaddy do all that for me. <laughs> well, there's a button where it says hire a professional. <laughs> I tell you what, the other day. <laughs> I was ready to hire a professional because I was like, nope. <laughs> that stuff's hard. Like it is. You know, we spend a lot of time mastering all this other stuff. Like the last thing we have time for is mastering technology. And you know, it makes it worse when you only do it like every few months kind of a thing instead of it being like, you know, there's just little tricks that you kind of put in the back of your brain that you're like, well, I don't remember how to do this. So it takes extra time. Yes. It was an adventure. <laughs> I bet. I bet. Well, that's good. Um, I'm just like getting through each day. This is my opposition season. So the Gemini's, you know, are getting hit by opposition and Sagittarius. So I'm just kind of, you know. I'm not working hard. I'm just surviving. <laughs> it feels very restless to me. Like mm -hmm. this is where I'm like, I'm antsy. I can't, I, can't, I shouldn't say I can't relax because I'm relaxing a whole bunch, but it's, I'm still doing the busy things, which I feel like I always am, but it's still, um, 
like I'm on the edge of my seat, like waiting for the next thing to come. And, you know, I don't that's know. fire energy for you. It drives me nuts. I can't stand it. <laughs> yeah, no, you're yeah. Okay. So, okay, cool. We get some comments here. So people do see, all right. Sheila's here. Cheryl. <laughs> Kevin said, what a coincidence. He's reading the same book. Really, Kevin, I would like to know what you think about the transits coming up here in a couple of weeks. Let me know when you get to that page. <laughs> I want to know, has anybody here read the Celestine prophecy? I have read excerpts from it. I have not read the whole thing. Okay. One of my friends has like a, again, lack of a better term, like a book club thing she's going to put together to go through it. I've never read it. It's never even crossed my radar, but she's insistent that I read this. So um, when I get more information, I'll share it for anyone that wants to join, but she's breaking it up. She said chapter by chapter. So it'll be one chapter a week something like 13 weeks you know because there must be 13 chapters okay uh, well that's yeah. doable yeah do you yeah. want to hear my story about being in a little book club it's not really a story but <laughs> well you're a gemini so we know you're naughty you're not going to follow any rules i got kicked out <laughs> i'm just feeling honest tonight like these are stories you don't ever talk about but i'm feeling like sharing <laughs> feeling like an open book <laughs> I got kicked out because I got a couple chapters behind oh and it was so sad because I was going to use the weekend to catch up and <laughs> they kicked you out are they, you what are they giving you a pop quiz every week or what I don't know I mean you know if you're gonna have a book club you should like get everybody's astrology before you accept anyone just to kind of know what you're dealing with like you can't expect the Gemini to like keep up and you know I feel like if you're gonna have a book club you already know that some people probably might not have a chance to read a chapter here or there sit you know give or take um but you're probably also there for a good discussion and that doesn't mean that maybe you couldn't join in you know what I'm saying? You might not have known his or her name or whoever the characters were or whatever, but you could have played along. You know, and it ruined the book for me. Like, I didn't want to finish after that. What was it? It's called, I'm going to totally give it away. Someone, it's, it's called 29 Gifts. 29 Gifts. It's somewhere. He's behind here. Yeah. Oh, here it is my lovely bookshelf I've never even heard of okay, this it's kind of it's a really cool I mean from what I've read I read about half of it <laughs> it's a really cool it's a New York Times bestseller and it's um how a month of giving can change your life and if I remember right the author she had MS or has MS yeah. and um some like oh the lady wasn't a shaman but some like mystical lady said you know, the way you heal yourself is by giving away 29 gifts. So she spent a month doing stuff for other people, finding ways to, you know, whether it was just energetic or whether it literally giving money to somebody, I don't know. She found ways to help other people. And I love it. Yeah. Basically, like I said, I didn't read the ending, but within half the month, she started feeling better and her attitude was better. And, you know, her body was responding in a positive way. So yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll finish it. Maybe I'll keep it over here. And Yeah, it sounds like a great book. It's probably something I'd really like. It's really positive and uplifting so far. So yeah, but that was a book club I got kicked out of. What the heck? That it is happens. So I <laughs> See, and I'm the, I'm the charge leader of stuff like that. So <laughs> Now, I was in one of your little book things too. It was, um, I don't know if I have it over here. It's in my, oh no, it's right here. Do you remember this, Rena? I do. And I know that book gets so much poop about it, you know, yeah. just because of the author and who she is, but there's really good information in there, you know, stuff that you can take and work with and 
I don't know. I really liked it. I, still- I didn't stay on track when you were <laughs> leading this one, but I did eventually get, you know, flip through it. Like, you know, I kind of browsed over the tarot part because we had already been doing. Oh yeah. Tarot, but there's still good info, like beginner info about it. And heck yeah, no, it's really a great book. It is. I mean, even just like I said, for some basic ideas on new things you can implement into like even space clearing practices and you know holiday stuff and you know however you want to celebrate doing things in the more traditional fashion I had it on my coffee table for years like just so you can kind of flip through it like you know I never had people over so I didn't have to worry about how it looked (laughs) well see and I just have all my stuff out so I feel like if you're coming over you're gonna see it but it also helps keep the riffraff out so yeah it's a good (laughs) protection (laughs) oh my gosh our sad season talk went to book club I'm sorry (laughs) it's okay it's okay these guys know who we are we know yeah you guys know we jump all over the place and Everybody, hello. All right, let's get back. Sag season. So, Rena, I have a question for you. So, we recently had the um, the solar eclipse. You know, we had the lunar one on um, November nineteenth, and then we had the solar one last Saturday on the third. Yep. Did you notice anything? Like any changes? Was it intense? Like, how did you feel about it? It it's definitely brought more self awareness. So I've I've kind of been stuck in this season of like dealing with the death of my mom, you know, healing from that. And I just really feel like, well, probably about June is when things started to get back to normal for me a little bit. Mm -hmm. But now I'm just really, I'm like holding the mirror up. I'm really goal oriented. I'm checking myself, make sure I'm on track. So in that sense, it's kind of put me in a propelling forward motion, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. My, um, so the Gemini Sagittarius eclipses that we had this year, it actually hit on my birthday, May 26th. So that was like the first one. Um, and then we had the second one, um, just the other day that, that made close contact with some of my planets on my chart. So it was intense is my point. It makes me question my birth time a little bit. <gasps> well, I think your mom's on here. So, I mean, she was there, but you know, I was born a long, 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 long time ago when we had all analog clocks. And so I'm not like for sure about this was just a thought that hit me today, actually, when I was thinking about the eclipses and how they may have affected me. Yeah. And I'm a one degree Taurus rising. So we're kind of on the edge there. So if I was born just three minutes earlier, it would put me as an Aries rising. And here's what had me question it. You, you ain't no Aries rising. I don't think so either. Oh, I don't think so. But here's where I'm kind of like, Hmm, I've done more traveling this year than I probably ever have within like one year span. And if I was Aries rising, if I was born three minutes earlier, these eclipses would have hit my traveling houses. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, hmm, but hmm. at the same time, I can see where with it hitting these other like second and eighth houses, I can definitely see change ups there in my life too. So I'm not like, okay, there's a problem, but I'm like, hmm, it's an interesting thing to, to wonder about. Yeah. Because with analog clocks, 428 versus 431, who knows, maybe a clock was fast, you know, like right right yeah because they're not universally set or anything yeah that's interesting so how far how much of a time span do things like that happen it's not every three minutes is it no but since I'm one degree if I had just if I was really born three minutes and what I prior to what I thought it would be at 29 degrees Aries which I use a whole sign house system because I I'm a Hellenistic astrologer it would totally like just three minute difference would have made, um, would have tilted the chart different. So interesting. So the, the rising signs change every, about every two hours. Okay. 
Well, you know, we're talking three minutes that could put you on the cusp for both. So that would make sense too. If you believe in cusps. Yes. Okay. <laughs> A little like some people do, and that's totally cool. Like there's, it's different languages, you know, it all works. So yeah. 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 I don't know. And I also, here's the thing. I have Mars conjunct with my ascendant anyway. <laughs> So I have that Mars energy. So I can't really tell if it's Aries or just my Mars on my ascendant. Yeah. It's a little bit of a, like, yeah. where I've been in my head today. I don't know. Well, raise your hand if you're an Aries rising. I don't know that I know any Aries rising people. I know that I know for sure Aries sun people. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that's me. No. And one in particular, I'm thinking, no way, no way. You know, John just Lennon was an Aries rising. I don't know him. I know him through his music, but that's some famous Aries risings there. Sure. Yeah, I don't know. Is anybody Aries rising? My friend Leah is an Aries. You would never know it. She's the calmest freaking person I think I've ever met. I don't think I've ever seen her upset, like ever, you know, so I don't see that, you know, and I know there's more to a chart and stuff, <laughs> just certain qualities I'm picking out versus the other person I'm thinking out who's just kind of hard headed, you know, headstrong, <laughs> my yes. way, way kind of energy. Yes, very enthusiastic, ardent, uh, assertive. Yeah, no, I, I would go temper. more with the Taurus for you, for sure. I think so. And maybe that's just because I'm me. to that Taurian energy. I don't know. <laughs> no, sorry. I'm in Texas. I have allergies. Yeah, I the Taurus thing, I really resonate with. So I don't, yeah. It's just, interesting. It is. It kind of just made me think. But with Taurus rising, these eclipses would have hit my second and eighth house, which is money um, transformation, um, can include literal death sometimes, not for the person, but having to deal with that in your life. Right. Uh, right. Just a lot of things like that. So I can see where those change-ups have happened too. So, yeah. I don't know, but yeah, the eclipses, um, they've been intense this year, but fun. It, it's kind of crazy. I don't know if anybody else noticed anything in the last week or so now. Um, these eclipses, they occur, and usually the most of that energy is felt within a month, but they last about six months, like any change-ups that can come. So um, you may not have kind of noticed anything yet. It might be coming your way, but. Well, I tell you, um, December 1st, I prepared for a very intense space clearing. I, I space cleared the home energetically. Um, I got my little cauldron out. I sat down and wrote down all of the, the things I don't like or the, the negative self-talk things. And then I burned it in my little pot. Oh. And then I wrote a new letter <laughs> and I read it every day, um, you know, cause I, I'm trying to progress, move forward and change some things. So um, that's kind of what I've been doing. And I, just really I don't know it's definitely propelled me forward it's interesting I don't know why I felt the need to do that on December 1st for some reason I thought the eclipse was December 1st well you'll still feel it that close up to it though so that makes sense <laughs> and my Cheryl my Gemini buddy here is saying that's weird because she's been traveling to more as well and she's a Gemini now Sagittarius rules travel like far away travel um so maybe that's what we're dealing with cheryl maybe it's just that sagittarius influence like with the eclipses it's bringing more of that in i don't know <laughs> i i need to travel i need out <laughs> you should meet me in new york in may i've been trying to like slip little hints here and there to rena and uh oh i know there it's brandy's birthday bash <laughs> heck yeah yeah it could be Kevin open. has a question he says what what's the difference between a tarot reading and a palm reading 
So tarot readings, and you can help me out on this, Marina, involves okay. the tarot cards. Oh, look at that. The magician's on top. Woo! Yay! Good omen. Um, and so I, when I read, and then we'll let Rena say how she reads, but when I read, I, I pull the cards out and I intuitively just get whatever information's coming. I also channel through talking. And so um, some people will notice when they get readings from me, I will just all of a sudden start talking and rambling and then bam, the message comes out. And I always stop and say, I'm sorry. <laughs> I channel through talking and this is how I get it out sometimes. But that's what, um, they have symbols and all sorts of things on here that can give us clues and help us tune in. What about you, Rena? Uh, that's basically how I do it too. Um, I, my channeling might look different, but um, usually it's a whole lot of nonsense and I'm stumbling for the right word because spirit doesn't always give you that right word. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but definitely intuitive readings. I guarantee I you in every reading, you'll hear me say, where am I trying to go with this? I always stop and say that out loud and I have to, because yeah, just, you just get it's hard to explain. Love it. I love it. Now, what about the palm reading, Rena? You do, you know, a little bit. I do not. I don't know yeah. anything about palm reading. So palm reading, I got big old hands. Maybe you should teach a class, Brandy. I, I do have one written up. I, maybe I should. Yeah, you should. Okay. You should. You read the lines on the palms and the way the lines go um, and different areas of the palm tells you things. It tells you about your personality. It tells you about your characteristics. Um, it can show things you've been through in life. So it's kind of a past, present, future technique. Um, normally when I'm doing a palm reading for someone, I like to just give them validation that I can see all these things. And then I like to go ahead to the future and say, okay, this is what's going to happen. Um, and, and you know, it can give you sometimes general things like um, you can see abundance coming, um, you can see happiness, someone feeling successful, um, or you can see where they need to work to have more of an outcome like that. You might need to, um, some people, it's very, very obvious when they don't have a whole lot of passion in life, when they're not in a career that feeds them, um, that all shows on the palm. So usually we have a discussion about, hey, you need to find something that really makes you happy that, you know, some kind of service to others, whether, whatever it may be, it can actually, um, give you ideas like that. If someone's better with doing their own business, if they're better in the communications business, um, healthcare, these kind of things. So fascinating. Yeah. Palm can tell you all sorts of things about the direction in life and, and, uh, maybe what life purpose is. That's fascinating. So I hope that helps Kevin. I would, I, do both, by the way. <laughs> I would love to combine that with some Meridian talk, you know, like, yeah. Tell us about that. Oh, well, I don't necessarily know all about the Meridians. It's just a basic subject we touched on. And when I went, when I went to massage school, we had some incredible teachers who they kind of did all kinds of stuff. One of our teachers, he was a chiropractor, but really focused on the holistic Chinese practices, the Chinese medicine stuff. So um, like opening and closing your, your body's energy portals before we even started a massage, like, you know, just stuff he would instill in us that way. Fascinating. Interesting. But you know, your meridian lines, like your, your kidneys, your heart, things like that. So just finding those points and seeing you know, it'd be fascinating to me. That would be cool. I eat that stuff up. Like, I think when I took um, all my Reiki courses, I think I took them just for me and the knowledge more than <laughs> like me planning on being out there. And I do Reiki um, distantly right now, but um, I just love learning about all that stuff. I'm pretty sure it was because of him that made me really interested in the energetic field. Um, mainly because for a couple of years, we had this just ingrained in us that your body is static, your bones are static, you know, they don't move. Um, but energy tells us otherwise, everything has a fluid open and closed motion. And of course it does. We breathe, we have blood, we have cerebrospinal fluid flowing, you know, just all kinds atoms. of atoms. 
all sorts. Of exactly. Things. Yep. Exactly. It's um, very fascinating. Wow. Want to mention? Um, I want to show something Rena offers for Sagittarius season. Oh. Can I share your Etsy store for a minute? Go ahead. <laughs> Don't laugh. No. <laughs> laugh this etsy store is amazing i don't know i mean so many of these products are in my house and i love them um but this is a seasonal item you offer i believe right rena oh yes yes okay. the sagittarius key the sagittarius key so how i mean you'll offer this until what the last day of sagittarius season till december 20th on the 21st we move into cappy season so then we'll have the capricorn key and um this is where you can find it is on her etsy store um or you can go to rena's website you can even go to my website and find rena that's how much i love her and love her products it's like i want everybody to know about it um but tell us about this like you don't have to be a sagittarius to love this key right right um Everybody is influenced by Sagittarius energy, even if you don't have a planet in the chart. And that's where our handy dandy astrologer over here comes in. Um, but there is a directional point um, without looking at my notes. I don't know what it is. <laughs> that's OK. Like, <laughs> I didn't even tell Rena I was going to do this. Like, she'll probably never talk to me again. But <laughs> <laughs> no, Brandy likes to do this. <laughs> It's fun. Um, so is it, is it 240, Brandy? Yes. Okay. So you can hang that in the directional area of your office or your home, and it kind of helps you tune in and access that Jupiter energy. Jupiter, Jupiter gets a bad rap sometimes. Here we're talking about this fire energy that drives us crazy, but it's expansive. It's beautiful. It is the planet of abundance. Dragon energy comes from Jupiter. So it kind of helps you hone into all of those expansive and adventurous qualities and pull those in to help you manifest. And how cute you have the little pendant ones too. They are cute. They are super cute. I love the pendant ones. Um, are they going to be about the same size as the one I have you made? Can I show them this? Yes. Okay. Very so I had Rena custom make me one and I love wearing it on a necklace. Yes. Yeah, and those beads are gorgeous. Oh my goodness. I have a little rose quartz bead on mine. I, I love now when I wear this and I'm being serious, like when I wear this, like things happen. <laughs> like it sorts out any mess that I have going on. Somehow things change for the better like this is a pretty magical necklace and it's not for everyday wearing for me like interesting yeah that's my story behind this one but this is kind of a custom thing I had to make um with certain intentions in mind and so but they're amazing to wear is my point they are they're I hear all kinds of amazing stories from people um we had this lady from France order some keys and you know, her placing the order and then it takes me a couple of days to prepare everything, get it to her. So by the time she had it, it's probably, I'm going to say a week and a half. It was actually pretty quick shipping, um, but she got back to me. She, she keeps in good touch with me, but she said she had already started seeing results from it before it got to her. Um, she knew things were changing and shifting and um she's told all her friends and I'm like this is this is pretty awesome you know so that's really cool really cool and I, I yeah I I believe it um so this is something you could order now for for yourself for your Sagittarius friend these make great Christmas prezzies too they do they do so all sorts of ideas there um, another thing that's offered through Etsy, um, through my shop oh, yes. is, let's try this. We have the Sagittarius crystals. I was just looking at those. I love <laughs> them. They're so pretty. Yes. And so these, um, come through my shop and they're all hand picked. So, um, 
I don't just grab crystals and throw them in the pouch. I actually hold all of them. I feel them um, to make sure they're not chipped to make sure they're in the best shape. I also intuitively pick them out. Um, even yeah. I can have the most beautiful crystal and sometimes it's not the right one. <laughs> I'll put the amethyst back and pick up a different amethyst. I feel out every single one that, you know, and, and intuitively pick them for who they're going to. So, and they also come Reiki charged and cleared. Awesome. Uh, free a, shipping. A super great price too. Seriously. That's like unbeatable. Thank you. Uh, now you offer free shipping as well. Is that right, Rena? I do. I yeah. do. These are all free shipping and they can be found on Etsy. Um, so anyone, I always have gifts for all the Zodiac signs. So if you ever need that, you know, for friends, for birthdays, for Yule, for Christmas, whatever you celebrate. Um, yeah, That's there's kind of a cool awesome. place to find these things. So very cool. Yes. Here we go. So what else about that? Who's your favorite Sagittarius, Rena? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'll tell you who your favorite is. Okay, I'll Google it real quick too. <laughs> my, I'll, I'll start with my favorite. So my favorite famous Sages, um, Jimi Hendrix, Jim Morrison, Keith Richards, Okay. Now I think we all know he's probably a fire sign. <laughs> I just forgot it was Ozzy's birthday the other day. So I'm going to go with Ozzy. Ozzy's think, a good one. I love Jimmy too, but we'll go with Ozzy because Ozzy wasn't mentioned. Okay. Very good. I try to think who else is, um, I don't know. You guys tell us who's your favorite Sag, but, um, I was looking through a list earlier today. I swear there was another good one too, but Oh, Brandy, you know all of these. Tell us who they are. No. There's another one. I can't even think. But anyway, lots of musicians are Sagittarius's. You know, you got that fire energy. They make great performers. Um, Jimi Hendrix is pretty dynamic in his chart. I wonder if I have his. Um, he is who I would picture as a true blue Sagittarius. You know, Ozzy too, because it's just kind of that. I just watched um, Breaking the Band, the Black Sabbath story. Man, was it good? I don't he, think I've seen that one. He was naughty, but a handsome young man. I, he, he was kind of hot, you know? <laughs> Rena has a crush on Ozzy. No. <laughs> I was like, wow, he's pretty. No wonder Sharon really liked him. Yeah. No, I could see that. I could see that for sure. And they're um, a beautiful couple. They really are. They totally like, they fit each other. Uh, you she, know, poop. they're interesting um, because they've definitely had their ups and downs. I, I should do some synastry on them to see how their charts line up. They seem to always get through their challenges because I mean, they don't have the perfect, nobody has a perfect relationship, but they've definitely had some ups and downs. And um, I mean, then like to really get into it, like in the eighties, I believe Ozzy tried to kill her when he was high. Oh, yeah. yeah. He woke up in jail. Had no I, I shouldn't laugh. I'm not, it's not funny. I'm sorry. It's just crazy. Well, no, but it, I mean, he was just drunk and stoned and had no clue what was going on. He was in another world. So um, Tina Turner, She's another true blue uh, Sag. She's a Sag. Yes. Yes. Yeah. She yeah. is amazing. I was just listening. Actually, me and Wade were just singing Tina Turner in the kitchen about an hour and a half ago. That's so awesome. My mom was a huge Tina Turner fan. I remember being a little girl playing with my toys and I don't know what, it, maybe a brush. And my mom would have Tina Turner on and I was like singing. I was going to be a rock star someday. Oh, I know. Tina's great. Yeah. Wade was singing private dancer and I was like, you're not doing it right. And I was like trying to tell him how to sing it. And like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Sagittarius are just so dynamic. Do you guys want to see, um, Jimmy's chart? I have it real. Quick. Yes. I actually have this. Um, and I'll try not to accidentally hit it and knock it off the slide. This was from the astrology one-on-one class that I taught. Um, it was a zoom class. I can't remember how long ago that was like two, three months ago. Um, but anyway, ago, yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. It was a fun class. Um, but we looked at Jimmy's chart and yeah. So not only does he have the sun and Sag, like we know about, he's also a Sag rising. He has Mercury and Venus all there with the sun. Um, very, very Sagittarius. I mean, look at that sense of style he has. You can see Venus and Sag there. <laughs> that is wild. Now Sagittarius is kind of bold energy. It's fun. It, it's like, um, it likes to explore. It likes to expand, you know, all these things, uh, Jupiter and spontaneous and yeah. So yeah, you, you totally see it on him, which makes sense with all of that being in the first house, that's going to make it very, even more visible, like physically visible on the body there. Um, he's got just such a fascinating chart. I know in the class, we went over the planets and just kind of went over it real quick real fast but um yeah so we got his chart there um one thing I've always found really interesting about him he has the Jupiter in Cancer in the eighth house and I in the moon there as well um for him I feel like this kind of gave him a lot of posthumous fame and fortune like I feel like as more and more time goes by the more and more famous he gets the more um, yeah. you know, just he, I mean, his, his legacy just expands every year. So, uh, um, right. Right. And I can see that. And especially, um, you know, even how we advertise things, you know, we have multimedia channels that they didn't have then to be able to share. And you have, um, like the uprising of like, my my parents' generation, you know, who were probably Jimi Hendrix fans, bringing it forward into their children, you know, so it's definitely being passed down into generations, and it's interesting. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Look at me lecturing about time and what's changed. <laughs> yeah, I know. I it's find myself terrible. doing that all the time, like, yeah, I know getting older getting up there <laughs> so that sag season we have another about 10 days of it so enjoy it 11 days maybe um and then we're going to hit capricorn season now one thing astrologically that we are coming up on is the venus pluto conjunction so venus and pluto in the sky will be in the same area um is that sunday is that the five planets lined up thing i thought i saw something well we're gonna have a huge capricorn stellium here in january um i was actually tracking this um right now we have let me get my ephemeris kevin if you have your ephemeris out you can tell us he said he reads this every day like i do so tell us about what a stellium is because now oh yeah that's where you have um, there's different theories on this and different definitions, but basically three or more planets in the same sign. So when you have like all these planets lining up in the same sign, we call it a stellium. It's basically a big cluster of planets. Now, if we look at today, uh, which is the ninth, I believe, got the sun in Sag, moon is in Aquarius. Um, let's see. Yeah, we have Mercury in Sag. Now Venus is already in Capricorn. Um, Mars is getting ready to enter Sagittarius here in a couple days. Woohoo. So we'll have all those. Um, but Venus in, is in Capricorn right now and it's getting ready to be conjunct with Pluto. It technically is conjunct as if within orb. Um, but that's going to line up and then Venus is going to go retrograde for a little over a month starting the 19th. So Venus retrograde, and we probably will talk about this on the next show when we're closer to it. It's kind of an energy you want to be careful with when it comes to relationships, when it comes to money, um, when it comes to changing anything about your looks. It's not a great time to try a new haircut, those kind of things. Don't um, cut especially. Your bangs. What's that? Don't cut your bangs. Don't cut your bangs. <laughs> especially, you, I mean, this is just like regular Venus retrograde stuff. With it being conjunct with Pluto, you really don't want to cut your bangs. <laughs> Pluto is intense, guys. You also want to be really careful in relationships. Um, you want to be supportive. You want to be really careful with the things like jealousy, 
um, being possessive. These are, you know, with a Venus Pluto conjunction, that can be a real deal breaker in a relationship during, and Pluto loves to bring that in. So you will feel the influences, but you want to be very careful about how you respond to that energy. So astrology <laughs> PSA. Does this also affect finances or is that just some ridiculous? No, especially when you got Venus, Venus rules the house of money, the second house traditionally. Then you got Capricorn, which is a, an earthy energy, which can be, you know, it, it rules career. Um, so you definitely have monetary influences going on with this too. So I'm, I'm kind of curious how this one will play out. Um, yeah. I was a little late getting Rena the Zoom invite tonight because I was actually playing with the astrology software. Um, I was looking at the USA's chart because as some of you might know, we're in a Pluto return in the US. That's why things are so crazy between everybody. Um, anyway, last time Venus and Pluto were conjunct was last January. And I was kind of curious what's going to happen this time around when it's it's going to be conjunct and then it's going to go retrograde and it's going to come back and make more conjunctions again. So curious. So how often does this happen for Pluto? Well, Venus is going to be conjunct with it every year because Venus rotates fast around the chart. Sure, sure, um, sure. The reason and I probably missed this part. The reason I'm curious how it affects the USA because it's lining up with its natal Pluto when this is happening right now because we're in a Pluto return and Venus is kind of hitting that and people, there is not a whole lot of harmony within the people of the country right now. So curious how that's going to play out. I don't know. Hopefully it's for the greater good. I'm going to say, let's just pray it's for an awakening for the greater good and all is. Peaceful. And that's Pluto. Pluto brings up to the surface. So anything that's being hidden, not dealt with, that's what Pluto does. So I think there's always as ugly as things can be, can be like, you know, for the greater good in the long run. Um, and I don't, and I'm not like saying, Hey, like things are going to get bad. I'm just saying, Hey, I wonder how that's going to play out. Are people going to work on harmonizing more, which you can see during a Venus Pluto conjunction as well. Um, or is it going to bubble up some ugly? I don't know. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of both. Maybe man. a little both. Yeah. So so yeah, you bringing that up, I'm just thinking of, um, well, you all know I'm a huge true crime fan, but I found something on HBO Max last night. Ooh, what is it? It's called The Slow Burn. And it's a story about a Baltimore police detective who is killed in the line of duty. And there's huge speculation that it may have been his cohorts who have done this to him because he was it had to do with um when the baltimore police department was god what was it called they were dealing with dirty cops uh, with gun trading and stealing and robbing people how far um ago was this is this more his name is Sean Suter, and this happened uh, 2017. Oh, okay. Um, I'll so have to watch that. Mind. It it blew my mind. I mean, we hear stories, you guys. I live in a pretty, I'm going to say small town. <laughs> not really small town. We have 60,000 people here-ish. So it's not huge, and it's not real tiny, but probably tiny. Karina's in Bismarck. I'm in Bismarck, North Dakota. Um you know, so we don't see a lot of this stuff here. I'm kind of stuck in this, you know, there might be things I don't like here, but I don't see a lot of that stuff. So it's a whole nother world for me being brought to my attention. And I'm just, whoa, you know, but it's a really interesting story. I'll have to watch that. I, I love true. I don't love true crime that it happens, but I love watching the investigation. I always like try to be careful when I say that, but um that'd be a good one to watch it's it's um it's eye-opening it made me go oh my god uh, you know we hear of like the brianna taylors and stuff from that area and it's heartbreaking and then this is just an added like oh my god like 
what can you even do to fix an organization like this? Do you remember the, um, it was a Netflix documentary. Is it called The Keepers? Yes. The Nun? Yes. Wasn't that in Baltimore too? I don't remember. I'm pretty sure that was a Baltimore case as well. Yeah. Holy it's been a while since I've seen that one. That one was really good. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. I'm always looking for a good story or podcast. So <laughs> yes. Now, and this sounds really, I'll just say it like it is. Part of watching true crime or things like this is also part of my study and mastering of mediumship abilities because it opens your references more. Um, it's, it's the weirdest thing and it's, there's just no way to make it sound nice, but it just gives you references. So spirit knows if you know of certain things or have seen certain things, they can use it as symbols to tell you about how they died or. Well, oh, that makes sense. I wonder if maybe that's what's my affinity for it is. Um, I've been a true crime fan since I was a little girl, you know, I remember reading books at the library and <laughs> on yeah. serial killers. <laughs> oh, I had Helter Skelter and I was a teenager. Now that's the book club I should have been in, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wasn't, I was never, and I want to make this clear, I was never a Charles Manson fan. Like I'm not one of those people who just, I, I think he's a creep. Um, but I'm a fan of 60s pop culture. And so I was always with the Sharon Tate being involved. I think that's what drew me in. But yeah, I, I bought Leslie's book. I should really finish reading it. Um, it's kind of interesting. Van Houten's. We were talking about this. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to think of the it was another I don't know if it was on Showtime or HBO, but it was a movie um, about them, something different than Mark and I had seen. So we watched it and it was about this lady who had went into the prison after they, after they were arrested and she was working with these women, you know, to educate them, you know, maybe just have something different for them to do, like reading books and learn stuff. Um, so it kind of, it was this, this lady who worked with Leslie, um, who kind of shared a story, you know, it, it's, it's interesting. I haven't gotten too far into it. Well, you should write down some dates and times and we'll pull some astrology and we should talk about it. Yes. In a future show. Yes, we should. Hi, Selena. Selena's popping in. Awesome. What should we do? Some, what should we do? Some card readings, more discussion. It don't matter. What do you guys want to do? Cards. I know you guys love your card readings. Who does so it? Let's do like normal. If you um, want a card read, give us a question or a topic. Give us, steer us in somewhere so we can zone in for you. And I want a card, Brandy. You want a card? Should I start with you? Start with me. I'm going to warm up with Rena here. <laughs> I All right. know what's my next step or if I'm missing something. Does that make sense? Yep. Where do I go from here? Okay. Rena, I swear this has come up before. Um, maybe not. Maybe I'm just remembering. But there is something you're supposed to go back to. There's been some idea. Um, some light bulb is, is kind of what I'm seeing it like, Ooh, little idea that you've thought about that you kind of dismissed or maybe not even dismissed, but put away for later and never went back to, but you're supposed to go back. There's something that is lacking energy that is just sitting on the shelf that could be highly abundant for you. Um, could make you feel really good. Could bring you a lot of peace and happiness. Um, why am I getting, okay, just bear with me just to see this is where I have to talk through it. Why I keep hearing the word prototype. I feel like you've made a prototype of something or you've started making something or hmm. very beginner stages though. This is somewhere in your house because I'm getting a sense that this is around the house somewhere. It's in my house. You have messed with something or even maybe drew it out. There's some, maybe it's like that you've drawn it out, but um, hmm. 
<laughs> you need to go back through your journals or through wherever Can, you, I don't, do you have something like that where you write ideas or you're, I, I have so many notebooks, Brandy, you'd crap yourself if you saw <laughs> what's over here <laughs> organized, but yeah, think back to what you were working in with last May ish. I'm getting, I'm going back to that time frame. Okay. But there's something left unfinished. Is it a product or a client? I think it's a product because I feel like you've either drawn it out or, or we're even trying to figure out how to make it, or you might've messed with something. Like, I feel like there was some sort of prototype, even if it was just. <gasps> is it sprays? Because this has come up for me lately, like that I need to re-explore. Do you this. have the herbs in them? No herbs. No, it's just. I'm seeing plants plants or the oils or something like that okay. have to do some thinking on that okay interesting Thank or you. dried flowers something like that I'm seeing some kind of see if you wrote something down about that that's the hint I'm getting um okay. these have something to do with the home with the house like for people to use in homes or houses or something like that. Interesting. So that's your next step. That's where you're, sp you're supposed to go back and finish. Um, <laughs> if anybody uh, knows what this is. <laughs> you know what it is. You got to sit with this for a minute. Something to do for people's homes. It either lifts the energy. Um, There's something about it, like, um, oh gosh, I'm just totally public, but um, there's something about it, like you didn't know how it would work or how you would ship it or how something would work like that. That's kind of the other sense I'm getting with it. So you kind of tabled it thinking, eh, I don't know, but you're definitely supposed to go back to it. Interesting. Yeah. yeah so go back to it. Think back, do some backtracking to May. There's a couple of things. So, yeah, interesting. I don't know about your weather, but would you have been out doing gardening stuff in May? This year I was, yes. Okay. There's something, I feel like that's when you were, um, you know, you know how like when you get busy working on things and your mind's just kind of going, this is when you were really thinking about it or getting the spark for it. Um, see, I'm doing, I'm going back and trying to backtrack and that's what I'm seeing you doing. Yeah. So kind of think about what kind of place you're in when you were doing the, the gardening or planting flowers, what have you. Um, this is when this idea sparked. Interesting. Okay. Thank Sorry. you. I try to be helpful. I think I just sent you on a big like meditation journey with that one. You gotta go Oh, back. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm ready for my card now, Rena. Okay. <laughs> this is your hey, chance to get me back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm coming. Give me a second. I know. It's like, it doesn't know what to tell me. It's like, I don't know. Just give Brandy the whole deck. Well, this is interesting. It's definitely a time for introspection. Um, and I know this is going to seem like really hard work, but you have to find time to get quiet because you have a guide that's telling you he has answers for you. Got it. So yeah. you, you have to make the quiet time. <laughs> I <laughs> got it. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I can feel that around and not hear, but feel only. And yeah, I need to, yeah. I need to hear it. Yeah. That's your next step. Um, and look for butterflies. Okay. I love butterflies. Yeah. I feel like I feel like that's all I needed to tell you because it's none of my business from there, but it has to deal with 
with your home and finances and moving forward and taking things to the next level. Yeah. That's so funny. Cause I, I wake up last few nights, like, do you know how, like you wake up with a dream, like kind of on the tip of your tongue or the tip of your memory and you're like, ah, and you can't access it further than that. So I know there's been some, some discussion, some talking going on and yeah. Mediums don't get to sleep. Well, <laughs> Go into meetings. <laughs> yes. Sometimes we get up and have to write things down. Because <laughs> <laughs> that's the only time I'm, this medium is quiet and still. So it's, we got to do business. So, uh, okay. Thank you, Rena. Thank you. Yes. All right. Jessica Avery said she love a card on her career. All right, Jessica, this is about your career. Let's see what they want to tell you here. Jessica, like where you work right now, um, you're so intuitive. Um, and, and I do know this. I know Jessica is a medium and does mediumship abilities um, or has them. Um, you are getting so much information when you're at your job right now. <laughs> like, but you got to be careful. Like you're not supposed to, exp you know, it's not that kind of atmosphere where you say, oh, I have the spirit here who says this, but you're getting so much information. Um, it's time to kind of start looking at combining all your talents and abilities. That's the sense I get. Um, next year, I feel like 2021 has been kind of a, not a stagnant year, but a, um, just like a continuation year where things are kind of just stable. Um, there hasn't been a whole lot of, um, newness or, um, or bringing in all the energy you wanted, you're kind of just been keeping things stable and kind of keeping things working. That's kind of um, how I feel. 2022 is going to be different. Um, you're going to be getting really busy and you might even be putting some things to the side that you didn't think you were going to put to the side for a while. <laughs> so you are changing directions. You're, you are in a closure period where you're close, you're tying up loose ends. You're getting ready to take um, that step towards expansion. So I hope that makes sense. I hope you're still on here. Um, that's what I'm getting. So lots of expansion coming with the career um, and, and changing paces with it. So it's a good, it's good. It's good energy. It feels good. All right, Rena, you're on. Okay. I'm going to pull a card for Cheryl for career. Uh, so I feel like um, there's a lot of overwhelming energy and it, it's, it's kind of foggy, hard to see through. Um, there, there's something new that, that uh, will be coming forward for you soon. Um, this feels like a final, finality chapter, putting closure on things. Um, so just hang on. Um, no need to like put in a two week notice or anything just yet because the opportunity is going to present itself very soon. You'll know what it is. Um, you'll be called right to it. Just right now, things feel really cloudy, but they're stay focused on your goals because you can see them and this is what's gonna help you propel towards, towards moving forward with this. Um, Hopefully that makes sense. There's, there's a lot of symbols here, but it's, it's really foggy and it's like, you just feel exhausted. Um, so make sure you get some rest. Things will get clear for you soon. Jessica was on here. She got to hear the reading. She's laughing. She says, spot on. Spirits are talking to her. <laughs> so much chattier lately. 
and spot on with 2021 energy she says thank you you are welcome thank you jessica hey elisa elisa just popped on all right uh carrie she wants a, a job stuff reading as well <laughs> here i am tripping on my words it's always a good sign I, it, okay so I'm getting that mercury retrograde feeling again. <laughs> Welcome to my life. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We'll see what's going on while I'm getting Carrie's cards here. <laughs> Where is it? Yeah. So Mercury and it, it should get a little better. Uh, Mercury, you know, is a pretty fast moving planet. Um, it's moving out of an orb with a conjunction with the sun. So I find whenever Mercury and the sun are, are together in the sky, you get kind of a Mercury retrograde effect because Mercury's combust. So I feel that very yeah. much. Mm. All right, Carrie, this one's for you about job stuff. Um, hmm, this is interesting. I gotta fill this out for a minute. Um, you're kind of in a position like a leadership type position and people are really looking up to you um you're kind of feeling like you're you've been like building for so long that you're kind of in this like just that's where your energy patterns at it's like what's next what's next what do I need to be working on next right now it's kind of saying hey just slow down and enjoy being where you're at like I feel like you're on top right now um you won't be here forever. You're still going to expand and that stuff's coming. But right now you're supposed to just enjoy where you're at. Don't feel like you're supposed to be introducing something new or you're supposed to be like, I feel like that's where your head's at, like where, where the energy staying still and you're kind of, you might be panicking because you feel like you're supposed to be working on the next step. Not yet. <laughs> it's coming. But right now you're just supposed to enjoy, um, just be where you're at in the moment. I hope that makes sense. So just be still where you're at with the job stuff. Awesome. By the way, uh, Rena, Cheryl gave you feedback. Did you get to see that? No, I didn't. Accurate. I didn't. Lots of things going on. Um, caregiving for her mom, new grandbaby mm -hmm. coming, be pulled a lot of different directions. Okay. Well, just hang on. You're going to see your way through it. I promise. Um, that that foggy is going to lift. You're, you're going to have a clear path. I promise you just stay focused on what it is you want and move towards that doing your, doing your daily stuff. So hang in there. All right. Got this. And Carrie says her Capricorn brain is always what's next. <laughs> oh yeah. I yeah. completely understand that. <laughs> and Capricorn season's coming. So, you know, just remember <laughs> Capricorn is also a very fixed, not fixed energy. It's, it's a cardinal energy, but it's very kind of like secure kind of building that foundation as well. So kind of maybe use it for that. Like, okay, I'm where I'm at. I'm in a good place. Just going to kind of stay there and then, then I'll expand later. <laughs> yes. No, I feel bad telling a Capricorn. Hey, just be still in the moment, but you know, yeah, that doesn't work. We're like freight trains. I know. <laughs> I wish I had some of that. <laughs> it's overwhelming sometimes. <laughs> um, I drew some cards for Kathleen. She has a question about a friend wanting to introduce her to somebody. I, uh, feel, yay. <laughs> I feel that um, that your husband is actually leading this out. He like he picked this person out. It doesn't have to be anything real serious right now um, because that's kind of, I feel like this is the energy that's coming up. Well, well how fast is this going to move? Um, is this going to be somebody I get along with? He's going to stimulate your mind in the most wonderful ways. This is somebody that you can connect with and have really intelligent conversations and go and do fun things with. So, um, you know, step into it with this friendship level, with this playful fun. Hey, I can go to a movie. I can go dancing. I can go out for a nice meal and have a good time. Um, let things take their course. It's going to feel like 
you've known this person for a really, really long time, and it's just going to be a breeze to step into it. Don't let this scare you. This is exactly what needs to happen. Um, again, this I feel like this is a blessing from the other side for you to keep you company. It feels good, Kathleen. I'm, I'm with Rena. Yes. Have fun and give us an update. Yes. <laughs> I expect a call or text. There you go. All right. Kevin, Kevin Ola says he's asked about career before, but it looks like I may have the opportunity for change the next day or two. I'm oh, torn. I remember us pulling a card for this. This was like a fast moving. This is going to come up. Ooh. I kind of remember this. I'm going to do, okay, I'm going to do something I don't usually do on these. So Kevin, if you're watching, bear with me for a second. I'm going to do a quick decision spread. So we're going to have choice A and B. Okay. So right now, Kevin, decide what's A. Let's say where you're currently at. Okay. And choice B, the new opportunity. Okay. So A, where you're at, B, new opportunity. And let's see which one looks better so you can kind of sort through. I don't normally do these on this, but I'm still drawn to do this for Kevin because. Hey, that's okay. You know, I draw more than one card. So I feel like it just gives you a little bit more of a whole picture. This is like a whole spread with a regular deck of cards. This is <laughs> kind of different, uh, but that's all right. This will be fun. And then Rena, you pull a couple of cards for A and B and see if we're okay. Just to kind of fill in some gaps. All right, here we go. And Kevin, it's important that you um, also see how you feel about this. When you know, I don't ever want to tell people what to do. Um, I just kind of want to give what I see with each side of things, and then you see what resonates and where you're drawn. Interesting. Evan, I think you know which way you're drawn. Here's the thing. Yeah. Um, things aren't perfect where you're at. But choice B doesn't look like it fixes anything for you there. So um, with choice A, um, I almost feel like you could use this opportunity as leverage, like, hey, I have this opportunity. And then A could come back and say, oh, well, let's do things to make you happier here. I hope I'm making sense, Kevin. Um, I, would, I, I would be very um, cautious about making any quick decisions. <clears throat> Marina, what are you getting? I, I agree with that completely. I have the, you're in a really good place right now. Um, the whole, you can use it as leverage. And, you know, if you stay, you can propel yourself forward in a faster way, which is going to get you the results you want to see. I know you're losing sleep over this right now, um, but I think you're in a really good place. Choice B I feel like you're going to be in limbo. You're, you're going to feel like you don't fit in. Um, you're going to have this what if syndrome popping up all the time. Um, I'm seeing a female that, I don't know how to explain this. Um, like, like maybe there's just some clashing energy there. Um, and it's not going to be anything you're doing. It's just she wants to feel headstrong and be in charge. And um, it'll put you in a weird position. So I'm with Brandy. Yeah. Emotionally, it's not a good place. Yeah. Financial security, it lies where you're currently at. Yes. I hope that helps, Kevin. And, and I sorry, think, we just put all your business out here. <laughs> I think it goes with saying, you know, the job and mm -hmm. that gives you a sense of security in the, in its own self. Um, yeah. And he knows, I think he knows, I think he knows which uh, direction he's feeling safest with. And um, 
follow your intuition for sure. He says, thank you, ladies. You're the best. Aw, oh, shucks. Thanks, Kevin. Woo, that felt intense. <laughs> yes. I can't breathe for a second after that one. Elisa, uh, I think she wants you to pull a card for her, Brandy. All right, Elisa, my friend. Just general, I think. <laughs> Kevin says, I think you nailed it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for being so open. Because when those readings come out intense like that, that means the receiver is really open to the information and that 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 really helps the reading. So but I kind of want you to go to this interview and tell me who this woman is. <laughs> we, we want the scoop on this. Like <laughs> we love us some drama. <laughs> All right, Elisa, are you still on here? Cause I'm going to draw a card for you. Do you mind? She wants just a general reading. Okay. Let's see what comes up. All right, Elisa. Yeah, she's here. She's ready. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, and with exception to Kevin, I try to keep things vague to protect privacy. Kevin and Raina are off limits. No. <laughs> Kevin knows what he's getting into by now. Um, <laughs> Elisa, so it feels like it's kind of been a rough time lately. Um, I'm feeling like it's really a time to work on like self-love, self-acceptance, self-value. Um, <clears throat> try not to, why do I feel like you're um, hearing an old conversation in your head where someone was saying like something they either didn't like about you or maybe something that um, pointing out like being critical, like maybe pointing out a weakness which was not the truth. It was just their perception and it's, they have no validity in what they were saying. Um, but I feel like something like that, it, it, you can kind of hear, um, or it's kind of on repeat in your head or, or it's affected you maybe subconsciously and you don't realize it, but right now you're supposed to be really, um, focusing on your strengths, focusing on what you love about yourself and just going with it. Um, there's something about you, I'm seeing animals around. Are you, um, it's been years since I've talked to Elisa, but are you working on um, working with animals or some kind of healing? Cause I consider that the healing field as well. Um, this is a direction that you should head towards or that you should work in right now that will help heal kind of the self-judgment stuff. Am I on the right track, Elisa? But basically healing a lot of um, just the way you think about yourself, the way you feel about yourself, um, keeping it positive, not focusing on negatives. That's what I'm getting. I hope that makes sense. Um, that's your direction though. Um, I think you're kind of almost out of this though. Like, I feel like you're getting ready to turn a corner here and it's almost like you have to use up some energy or it's going to use you right now. I feel like you got to throw yourself into work into some kind of healing modality. I hope that makes sense. All right. While we're waiting for her feedback, is there anyone else waiting? Uh, she says, okay, she's not sure about the conversation. She says a lot of conversations do stick with her that people have said, but um, she's recently lost an animal and found another that has replaced and filled her heart. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Lisa. Yeah, um, you are going to feel a lot better really soon. I think you are working on that healing. Um, hmm. I'm almost... Um, almost feel like you got, you should, um, what am I trying to say? Maybe you can help me, Rena. It's about kind of digging into the subconscious. I feel like there's something still stuck there. Yeah. Um, 
just kind of background noise I'm hearing is just preparing for that Capricorn season. Um, this expansive energy is, you know, again, it needs to be uh, used up. Um, it, it feels like there's a fire burning that kind of needs to just fizzle out and you can do that with self-care. Um, once Capricorn season comes, it's the perfect season to kind of dive in and do some of the things that make your heart happy, make you feel that comfortable feeling, that um, home and hearth feeling. So maybe just finding new ways to spend time with that fur baby. Um, definitely. I feel like there's some kind of connection with the animal you just lost. Did, was there someone who said something like, um, was there issues where like, they were like, oh, maybe you need to be careful. I don't, there's some kind of health issues, you know, it may be too much beyond your control or what you can, if you can, I, I don't, I don't want to, I want to be careful. I don't want to put everything out here like that, but like, does someone doubt like if this, with this animal, like if you could help get them better or was there some negativity around it and their attitude around it? I don't know why I keep going back to that. I don't feel closure there yet. And maybe that's something you're going to work on too. Uh, just tapping into that animal communication. And um... I feel like there's some criticism or something somewhere. Um, and you don't have to answer, Elisa. Just, that's just kind of one place to kind of sit with and kind of heal that and realize um, th basically the overall message is whatever that is, there was no validity to it. And, um, your powers and your healing and your love and compassion are so expansive that like other people have no idea. Maybe they can see a part of it, but you're more powerful. She's saying she had a pet rat, had a very large tumor. She had to put her to sleep. Oh, it was really hard to make that decision. Jeez, I'm sorry. And I can feel that. That's like, it's pretty painful. Um, so continue with healing that. Um, we'll message on the side, Elisa, okay? All right, I'll message you later. We'll talk about that. Lisa has like just this heart of gold. I mean, I can just feel it like. Um... There's no doubt, like <laughs> you really did everything you could for Tia. So she appreciates it. You bet. We'll talk more on the side. We'll We'll get deeper into that. All right. I did use some good vibes, man. Yeah. That's so hard. I mean, pet losses. Oh just... God. Why can't they live forever? I know. Ever and ever and ever. It's not fair. It isn't. It isn't. All right. Did we get to everybody's cards or are we missing? Oh, here's uh, Aldo. Do you want to do that one, Rena? Feel like there's a million messages coming through <laughs> it's like I he's am. pulling on oh i should ask this i should ask this or sending energy here there everywhere interesting so um i see that you're you're kind of fighting a war within your mind um there's a message of um, it's kind of that foggy energy again. It's this, um, is this an illusion? Is this real? Um, feels like a dream state. 
focus on what makes you happy. Um, this is where your most important message is, is head exactly to the place that makes you feel good, happy, and secure. But you got to work through, work through the fog. Um, don't, don't listen to the outside influences. It's given you a lot of, whoo, these foggy ones, Brandy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it, it's, it's creating a lot of noise around you. Um, just, just focus on the things that make you happy. It will continue to manifest. So this will be a record season will help with that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> it clears out the fog. Yeah. Um, and you know, these things that I'm talking about, do the things that make you, they can be simple little things, cook what you want for dinner. If that's what, you know, if that's, what's going to bring a smile, read a book, watch a movie. Um, I'm seeing the binge watching, like just, yeah, yeah. Do take, time do out, take a do. sick day. <laughs> that's what sure. I call it. Sure. Definitely. Yeah. It's these little things that are going to help you get from A to B. Just don't listen to the outside influences are creating so much noise and fog and um, you know what's right for you. So head straight towards that. Honestly, when I check out for a day or two, man, that's where the clarity comes from. Even though you don't feel like you're working on it and you feel like it's, sometimes you can feel like you're getting foggier, but as soon as you kind of get back into the things, you're like, you're ready for it. And it's, you know, you just function better. Is that kind of, that's what I'm feeling off of that stress looking for a job. Okay. So, so maybe you have these outside influences that are telling you to go here, or do this or this. What is it that's going to make you happy? Where is it that you want to be? Where do you want to look for a job? That's where you need to go. And you know what I'm getting about that? I mean, money is important. We all have to have the resource, right? Um, but to help you with your search, it's about looking at the job itself, not looking at the pay. Right. Um, and I'm not saying like, oh, just go for any low paying job. That's not what I'm saying. But if you kind of just like um, do a search for what you want to do, somehow the money comes with it. It's right. like you got to shift your focus and that money will still be there, but that's going to get you there um, easier, smoothly, <laughs> um, right. get you to the right spot. Does that make sense? So, so don't do anything that you don't want to do. Because I feel like you don't have to do that. Um, it's not about making everybody else happy. Yeah. You got this. It'll it'll clear up, and uh, you'll. I'm feeling pretty positive that you'll you'll get the outcome you need. Yeah. It's so hard because, like, sometimes when you worry or stress, like I know that can be kind of blocking, but yet. That can also be what drives you too. So there's got to be kind of a balance there. Um, yeah. I think it's just about taking a different approach to it. So I always pull a clarifying card and my clarifying card was the five of swords, which tells me this is a quick change for you. Um, yes, you're feeling it. It's creating a stress in your brain that nobody wants to deal with that, but it, it'll work itself out. Just, you know, again, focus on what it is you want to do. Um, where you want to spend your time. Um, you don't have to go clean out the trash cans if you don't want to. You can, you can do whatever it is you want to do. Um, just look for jobs where that is. Great. Well, I think we should end on a card of encouragement for everybody. Um, for those watching who didn't ask for a card or for those who happen to watch later. Um, Hopefully it'll resonate. Should we each draw one, Rena, or draw a couple? Yeah. I don't think I ever draw this one card. Who does? Me. Man, tell me when you're ready, Rena. Okay. Oh yeah. So we got a really good card of encouragement. 
lots of great opportunities, happy, blissful feelings. Again, do what it is that makes you happy. It's all sunshine and roses. Oh, yeah. New opportunities. Look at all of that. I love Freedom. It. Freedom. So if you're feeling stuck or you're feeling like, and, and I'm getting a, like this message, like it's not even so much feeling stuck for some people. For some people, they feel like they have what they deserve. Like, well, I didn't do this or that. So I deserve where I'm at. No bullshit. <laughs> Sorry. It's the only word I can say. That's a bunch of crap. You're, you deserve more. And so it's a time to go after those opportunities um, and get more, get that expansion. Right, Rena? I love it. I love it. Celebrate who you are, what you are, and where you want to go every step right. of the way. That's right. Well, this has been fun, Rena. It has. That's lots of card reading. Now, tell them where they can find you because you do card readings on the side. I do. Um, and right now I have my year ahead spreads. So <gasps> that's uh, right. Tell us about them. What, what is it? How do you do the readings? So these are 13 cards. You got one for each month. It's going to read like you're flipping your calendar. So January, you'll have a little mini reading for January, February, you know, on throughout the year. And then you have a general, um, kind of a theme card. So that's your 13th card. Um, I take a picture of the spread um, and I send this all to you. And I always recommend printing out your reading and keeping a little journal, just kind of journal the things throughout the year that, you know, go along and it'll help you keep track. Those are so cool. And where do they find that on your website? Um, well, you can connect with me. Uh, I haven't put anything on my website yet. I Sorry. will. I promise. <laughs> I don't know why I thought it was on there. But you can, what I'm thinking. you can totally find me, connect with me on holistichealingtherapeutics.com. Awesome. So get in touch with Rena for that. Um, any of my services, they're always available to um, through my website, brandyburrowastrology.com, where I do tarot, palmistry readings, astrology readings, natal chart readings. Um, and if you don't know what you need, there's a 30 minute and a 15 minute option for just guidance. And I can use tarot, astrology, whatever I need to, to help you with that. So, um, so find us on Facebook, reach out. Either way, we're here to help you. Um, and don't forget the Etsy shops. Rena's is Purple Rain Company. Yes, Purple Rain and Co. Got it. And May Sun Astrology Gifts for me, or just message us. We'll give you a link there. So that's right. Okay, well, we'll be back next time. Meanwhile, if there's anything you guys want to discuss, send us a message. Let us know if you want to hear about something or if you want to talk about a certain subject nothing's off the table. We love talking about everything. That's right. We're all in. <laughs> We're all in whatever you want to talk about. We have something to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, freedom says, thank you. You both are so fun and cool. Thanks oh, for watching freedom. Sweet. It's been so much fun tonight. Oh yeah. It's been a couple of weeks. It was good to get back into the flow of things, be a little social. That's right. Break the ice, get back into it. So. Great. All right. Well, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.